Today I'm going to show you how to make a chickadee with oil paint. And we're going to do it in a small size to keep it short and simple. The whole exercise should take about 30 to 40 minutes. And um, I'm going to walk you through it. And uh, so let's get started. One of the reasons I chose a chickadee is because uh, it's a very simple bird and it's just so cute. So many people uh, like the chickadee birds. So um, it'll be very easy because it's also only got two colors if you do a black cap chickadee, which is what we're going to do. So, um, and you can play around with the background as far as what colors you want. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. So the first thing we do is I'm going to go online and get a free, royalty-free uh, image of a chickadee. And um, I just download one that's uh, royalty-free and a pretty simple pose. And I'm going to uh, take it to Photoshop. And we're just going to use the basically the shape of the bird and the branch and I'm going to go ahead and flip it around um, just ro uh, rotate it horizontally so that it's facing the opposite direction and that's just to further just make it our own and so we're not just copying a photograph even though this is royalty free and I always would use um, as a reference either my own photos or a royalty free um, or a one I have permission to use. Um, and then I usually never paint, you know, just the photograph, but just use it as reference to make sure I'm getting the colors of the bird right. And oftentimes I'll even um, adjust the pose like the way his head is tilted or something so um, okay I have some other videos I'm going to do on the sketching I apologize I thought I had recorded that part but I guess I didn't um, so um, anyway we're going to be sketching again with paint on the panel and I use a little white gesso board panel by ampersand you could also use a canvas panel. You might need a, a stiffer brush. I'm using soft sable brushes and an imitation sable and a real sable. And then um, I do use a bristle brush um, as well. So you might for the canvas need just bristle, bristle brushes because they're a little stiffer on the canvas. So the paints we have are a titanium zinc white, a cadmium yellow, a cadmium red light, ultramarine blue, viridian green, and a transparent earth orange. And it's off the camera so you can't see it, but I am just taking some of the Gamsol or paint thinner and um, making the transparent earth orange runny. And um, I have one dried out brush that I use to draw with. So it's really stiff. It's almost like um, a calligraphy uh, nib on the top. Um, and it, it'll hold a little bit of paint, but I, I really keep it runny, like you just saw me dip it in the paint thinner. I'm going to paint some berries down there. And as I mentioned in the intro to this, um, you could really do the background of this chickadee any color you want. Um, I decided to go with a red. So I'm just mixing some of the ultramarine blue into the transparent earth orange to make my black. And then this is gonna be the start of the background. And I'm just gonna use a more saturated red with no other color mixed in besides the white. Sorry if I'm mumbling, I kind of have a sore throat. So I'm just gonna lay a little bit out so that it's not just me painting on a plain uh, stark white background. I uh, just get some color going there and that to create a little bit of atmosphere. And here's the branch. I'm going to start the, I use a stiffer brush for the dark colors just because uh, they kind of scratch and um, have rougher edges. So because it's such a harsh color, um, the bristle brushes just kind of soften the harshness 
And then I use my smoother brushes for the lighter colors and the details. But a lot of times, even for the details, I'll use the hard uh, and stiff brush. So we're just going to add some mid-tones and then I'm going to gray down, add the complement to the red to just kind of gray down the background and just add um, a few brush strokes and then change the color up again. So there's always a little bit of movement and interest in the background and it's not just one solid sheet of uh, color but kind of creates more planes in the atmosphere of the, the background or the, sk the sky, I guess, the red sky. All right, so now just trying to get the values uh, in check here. So um, the belly's got to be lighter than the red background, but I don't have a lot of paint, red or white paint in the background. So um, you do see a little bit of the um, the value. You can you want his belly to stand out. Now uh, around his beak, I didn't paint a dark red there because I really want to accentuate his beak. So I'll make the values even lighter than the photo. I'm going to accentuate um, around the beak by putting a lighter red. And here I'm just adding this, even though the belly's white feathers, I'm it's in shadow, so I make it uh, add some blue to it. And here's kind of a mid tone, just to kind of mix the light and the dark together. I always at the top of the chickadee, um, it's really white, so I always make sure to use the whitest colors there. But I never use like white, white or black, black. Usually, I I try not to go to both extremes. You want to kind of keep it um, kind of reined in as far as the values. Now I had some happy accidents happen here that maybe would drive you nuts, but I dropped some um, gamsol by the belly of this chickadee and it started to just run uh, the paints and uh, create a well and a few speckles um, on the chickadee. And you might see them at the end, I'll show a close up. And I decide to just leave it. Um, sometimes on darker paints, it can separate the paint um, when you have a lot of thinner on it. Uh, but even that, I've left before because it just adds a cool, interesting effect that I wouldn't be able to get um, without. It, it just depends, though. Sometimes I cover over it. So I decided I can't really do red berries with this light red color I have, so I do green berries. Um, but then I'm going to add a little bit of orange to it just to kind of make them look like they're ripening. Alright, we've almost got the background done. And I did place his feet a little different, his tail's a little slightly different. Um, and that's just kind of the fun that you can play around with. I've done so many birds, uh, it really just takes lots of practice. So if this looks like it's easy for me, um, you know, I've been doing these birds. This is almost my 1,000th chickadee, so um, it's number 952. That's how many I've done. So just, um, I guess the message is keep it up and uh, don't be afraid to, um, to try. Add right here uh, the highlights on the eye and maybe a little bit on sometimes I do on the fruit or um, like the very lightest feathers on the chickadee so we'll see I forget what I decided to do I did put some um, oh yeah right there where in the photo it looks like it's the lightest brightest spot on the bird Don't forget to sign it. All right, I'm just scratching through here, um, adding a little bit of a stem. I don't know what you call that. It's not the stem, but it's like the the bottom of a berry. I think I do add a little bit more. I feel like I need a little more substance to the beak. 
there's the final uh, product. Can you see those drips by the um, on his uh, by his mouth, his beak? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this.